Let's start with the questions and answers. What is the lifetime risk for developing ovarian cancer in the U.S.? For women in the U.S., the lifetime risk of developing ovarian cancer is 1.4 to 1.8 percent. What is the most common cause of malignant ascites? Ovarian cancer is the most common cause of malignant ascites. What are the criteria for poor prognosis limited stage ovarian cancers? Poor prognosis early stage ovarian cancer is characterized by stage 1C disease, stage 2 disease, clear cell histology, or any histologic grade 3 tumors. Which gynecologic cancer has the worst prognosis? Ovarian cancer is the type of GYN malignancy associated with the worst prognosis. What is a Krukenberg tumor? A Krukenberg tumor is classically a GI tract cancer that is metastatic to the ovary. What is the incidence and what are the risk factors for ovarian cancer? Ovarian cancer occurs in 1 in 70 women. The mean age at the time of diagnosis is 55 to 61 years of age. Ovarian cancer is associated with low parity, a high fat diet, and occurs most commonly in women with a history of miscarriages and infertility. Which malignant ovarian tumor is associated with pseudomyxoma peritone EI? rupture of mucinous cysted adenocarcinoma can lead to pseudomyxoma peritone EI. What is the most frequent benign ovarian tumor? The most frequent ovarian tumor is a benign mature teratoma, dermoid cyst. What is the peak age for development of ovarian cancer? 56 years old is the peak age for development of ovarian cancer. Are multiparous women, women having more than one child, more likely to develop epithelial ovarian cancer? No, multiparty appears to be associated with a decreased chance of developing epithelial ovarian cancer. Is there an association between tubal ligation and epithelial ovarian cancer? Epithelial ovarian cancer is less common in women who have had tubal ligation. How often do familial or inherited syndromes account for epithelial ovarian cancer? Approximately 10% of epithelial ovarian cancers are related to familial or inherited syndromes. Is there an increased risk of developing ovarian cancer in women with a family member with ovarian cancer? Yes. There is a 4% lifetime risk of developing ovarian cancer if a woman has one first-degree relative with epithelial ovarian cancer. There is a 7% lifetime risk if there are two first-degree relatives with ovarian cancer. What is a common ovarian cancer tumor marker? The CA125 blood test is the most common ovarian cancer tumor marker. What are the symptoms of ovarian cancer? The symptoms of ovarian cancer include abdominal discomfort, increased abdominal girth, bloating, constipation, fatigue, low back pain, irregular menstrual cycles, and dyspareunia. How often do adnexal masses turn out to be malignant in menstruating women? In menstruating women, Adnexal masses are malignant in approximately 5% of cases. How often is the CA125 elevated in women with ovarian cancer? The CA125 is elevated in more than 80% of women with ovarian cancer. Which types of ovarian cancer have the highest and the lowest frequency of being associated with an elevated CA125? Serous histology is associated with the highest frequency of elevated CA125, and mucinous tumors have the lowest incidence of associated elevated CA125. 
which histology is most common in patients with epithelial ovarian cancer. The serous histology is the most common epithelial ovarian cancer, and is responsible for approximately 75% of ovarian cancers. What are the goals of laparotomy in patients with ovarian cancer? The goals of laparotomy are to make the diagnosis, stage the patient, and perform cytoreductive surgery. Does the prolonged use of oral contraceptives affect the risk of developing epithelial ovarian cancer? Yes, use of oral contraceptive pills over long durations lowers the risk of developing epithelial ovarian cancer. The CA125 is an accepted tumor marker for ovarian cancer. Can an elevated CA125 be associated with other cancers? The CA125 is often elevated in patients with breast, lung, pancreas, and endometrial cancer. It can also be elevated in women with many benign diseases such as cirrhosis, uterine lyomyoma, and endometriosis. It is elevated in about 1% of normal healthy women as well. What are some ovarian tumors associated with elevated serum AFP? Yolk sac tumors, embryonal carcinoma, and mixed germ cell tumors can be associated with elevations in the serum AFP. Primary peritoneal carcinoma is similar to ovarian cancer but thought to be distinct. What are the criteria developed by the GOG to define primary peritoneal carcinoma? The ovaries are normal size or with benign changes, primarily serous histology, extra ovarian involvement more than ovarian involvement and surface involvement of less than 5 mm depth. Can the CA125 be used to make the diagnosis of ovarian cancer? No. The CA125 is not used for diagnosis and cannot replace a tissue biopsy. It is used only as a tumor marker as another tool to follow the progression or the response to therapy. Can the CA125 be elevated in patients without cancer? Elevations of the CA125 can be associated with non-cancerous conditions such as pregnancy endometriosis, and in patients with peritoneal or abdominal infection or inflammation. What are the three most common adverse prognostic factors seen in ovarian cancer? Advanced stage, high-grade tumor, and sub-optimally debulked disease are the most common adverse prognostic factors in ovarian cancer. How often is the CA125 elevated in patients with endometrial cancer? Approximately 15% of patients with endometrial cancer will have elevations in the CA125. Now, let us review some facts about ovarian cancer. 1. At a time. Fact. Infertility appears to be associated with an increased risk of developing epithelial ovarian cancer. Fact. The CA125 is often elevated in patients with benign disease such as cirrhosis and uterine lyomyoma. Fact: Ovarian cancers with mucinous histology are associated with the lowest incidence of elevated CA125. Fact: The Lynch syndrome 2 is associated with hereditary non-polyposis colon cancer, ovarian cancer urogenital cancer, endometrial cancer, and other GI malignancies. Fact: The earliest and most common way that epithelial ovarian cancer spreads is via direct spread of the cells into the peritoneal cavity. Fact: Serous, poorly differentiated, mucinous, endometrioid, clear cell, Brenner tumors, mixed and undifferentiated carcinoma are the histological subtypes of epithelial ovarian cancer. Fact: Ovarian cancer with serous histology is associated with the highest frequency of elevated CA125 and mucinous tumors with the lowest incidence of associated elevated CA125. Fact: 
elevations in CA125 occur much less often in cancers other than ovarian cancer. The role of using these tumor markers in the management of other malignancies is undefined. Fact, hysterectomy, breastfeeding, tubal ligation, oral contraceptive use, and multiparity are all associated with a decreased risk of ovarian cancer. Fact, ovulation-inducing drugs increase the risk of developing ovarian cancer. Fact, the general risk of ovarian cancer in the population is 1.6%. Fact, patients with two family members with a history of ovarian cancer have a 7% risk of developing ovarian cancer. Fact, 75% of ovarian cancers diagnosed or stage 3 or 4 disease. Fact, approximately 5% of ovarian cancers are of clear cell subtype. Fact, it is estimated that about 44% of women who inherit a BRCA1 mutation will develop ovarian cancer by the age of 80. Fact, about 17% of women who inherit a BRCA2 mutation will develop ovarian cancer by the age of 80. Fact. Patients with hereditary ovarian cancer who undergo a prophylactic oophorectomy have a 1.8% risk of primary peritoneal carcinoma at 6 years. Fact: Transvaginal ultrasound is used for screening for ovarian cancer, however this is not a great screening test because it does not pick up early stage disease. Fact. Mucinous and clear cell ovarian cancers have a poorer prognosis than serous and endometrioid ovarian cancer. This concludes our ovarian cancer review. FlashMed has thousands of video flashcards on YouTube.